I do want to ask you guys about possible transfers, possible transfers in midfield in terms of that refresh. One quick question to you, Nabade. Tactically, I know you look at it so so in depth when it comes to Liverpool. Are you wanting to see the old Liverpool? Sounds like a Kanye West thing, but do you, want to, do you want to see the old Liverpool or do you want to see a new Liverpool in terms of how they're going to play? I think Liverpool have been trying to figure out what the new Liverpool is. Like Firmino's played for a little while in the nine and that's worked quite nicely. Then he's played in the ten and you're kind of going, well, does that work? Darwin Nunez off the left-hand side. I think he's better suited there at the moment. Does Salah play through the middle? My thing is in midfield, Fabinho was poor in the first half of the season. And without Thiago on that left side at eight position, Liverpool are a shadow of the side they want to be. Naby Keita is in and out of the side. I don't know what his future is. Liverpool need a box-to-box midfielder. Someone mm. that they can rely on in both areas of the pitch. And I think that's the next development of the clock plan. We've had two holding midfielders and we've had three midfielders who don't contribute going forward. Now he's almost trying to convert Henderson into a contributing for, like midfielder who makes things happen going forward. That's not really his role. Yes. You need to find someone, and I know there's someone, and he plays for Borussia Dortmund, <laughs> but it's not <laughs> happening until the summer. But I think if you get him, you've now got like what you wanted from Wijnaldum in terms of your safety and possession and the man who can go box to box. But then you've also got what he wants from Henderson now is that final third player as well. And Henderson and him are best friends. So it, it feels like it makes a lot of sense. Let's you know? do it in January. Yeah. What, what, what happened to tapping up in football? I, I, do, I do want to say, with Liverpool though, the biggest thing for them, and it sounds so rudimentary, but it is integrating a number nine that plays very differently to how Liverpool have played previously. And I do think, despite his numbers being very good, that's been a big issue for them, especially in the first few games of the season, trying to work out how Darwin Nunes fits into his Liverpool side and towards the back end of the season before the break I think Liverpool started to figure that out Do you think he'll do better without Diaz in the side? Or Possibly you don't want it that way Possibly There's space there on There is space side and, them, right? and like I say when he plays centrally it's a lot tighter there's a lot less time to think you've got to be instinctive your touch has got to be on point and that's not his game it could become his game it could develop into a into a top striker but when he's got a little bit more time to think and a little bit more space that's where you see um, him at his best so I think if if Darwin New has come back from the World Cup and he is in good form and he can kind of sort his head out as well I think Liverpool will be in a good place I think transfers wise it's interesting isn't it January because you know first of all you've got it seems like very, very clear that the midfield needs help then it's the choice of do you bring someone and, and, and develop them? You know, a couple of options. You've got uh, Kouadu Kone. Um, you've got Casado, who's been brilliant for, for Brighton and Ecuador as well. There's a couple of options you could chuck out there. Uh, Maya, you could maybe go for a different kind of player in that, in that sense as well. But then, of course, the, the big names, Enzo Fernandez, um, who's actually only been at Benfica you know, not long at all, and Bellingham, of course, as well. Do you think that with a possible takeover as well, there is any chance of a transfer in January. And how do you think that will play out with the fan base? Liverpool are not signing anyone in January. The thing Zero, is, no my, chance. No chance. I think the second I see... But if they need, don't they need it? They absolutely do, but they did in the summer as well. Liverpool's sort of idea is that we we'll wait for Jude in the summer. My worry now is that like he's just put on a show at the World Cup. Not only has his value gone up, but now teams that were kind of sniffing before are going, we want him. And that's, that's it. Once, once Madrid go with one of it, it's game over. Then you're just praying that Jude is close enough to Henderson and close enough to Trent, <laughs> genuinely, that he goes, yeah, you know what, I like my guys there. That's maybe the next step before Madrid. The player that I would really like to see Liverpool go for is Anahi. Like he's been linked to everyone. Does that feel dangerous? You know, yeah. the whole World Cup. The, the World yeah. Cup. I just think, it, I think that's Liverpool style. I love the way he plays, and maybe he needs to improve when it comes to his end product. He's so good and exciting going forward. But when you saw him in the final third, there was. He just reminds me of Juan Alden. Like, yeah. and, and yeah. he could remind you of El Hadji. Yeah, but yeah. he could. He could. <laughs> but I think there's Salif like Jow? every game. Do you need more? Yeah, Liverpool have had a bad history with World, <laughs> World Cup signings, but I think when yeah. I, I think. There's certain players you can watch in a World Cup, and actually, I think Sofian Amrabat is heavily linked to Liverpool. I don't actually think he's the one we need. Like, we should avoid that one. Yeah. But I think Anahi, at his age as well, if he if he comes in, doesn't enjoy the pressure, maybe similar to Darwin Nunez, you put him on the back burners for a little bit, you can bleed him into the side. You've got until the summer. That's probably more likely Liverpool signing than say Jude or Enzo or names that we definitely go but, but, sign them. But there's been there's been probably one big example I'm thinking of. If you think about Verge, he came in in January. 
could have probably waited to the summer. He, he was he was going to come to Liverpool regardless, and that was a sign that you needed to make. We need to be desperate. That's yeah. the only thing. Like we, like in a weird way, like if Naby goes, I'm leaving, which apparently he is in the summer, and Henderson comes back and he's like, my legs are gone, and Milner's like, my legs are gone. Basically, Klopp needs to be in a situation where he's like, we have two midfielders <laughs> and I need at least three. Yeah. And the, the concern with Bellingham is the fact that, like you said, if you don't buy him now, if yeah. you don't buy him in January, it, yeah, it might, you might never get him. So, yeah. final question, question for the comments as well. Let's know, I'm intrigued to know how you feel about this one. Do you wait for Jude and take the risk? Mm. Or do you go and get someone else because you need a midfielder? No, chips in the middle of the table. You go and get Jude Bellingham right now. I'm, He's generational. He's such a good footballer, and it's all pointing in the direction of him going to Liverpool. You see he pictures. says that, but he didn't put him in the World Cup <laughs> team in the tournament. Go and watch that video. Too many is also generational. Do? <sighs> Liverpool don't. I don't think Liverpool buy him full stop at all. I think this is really tricky because I think if you're an owner, you don't want to plough in 125 million or wherever it's going to be to get Bellingham. So it feels like Liverpool are a little bit snookered here. What would you do? Let's know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.